I just walked into this electrical room in Thailand and I could have died. Let me explain. So I'm here in Chiang Mai, Thailand, and every time I walk down through this underground car park, I notice stuff, electrical stuff that calls to me. If you're an electrician, you'll know the feeling. You see a panel like this, full of lights and buttons, and the cover is slightly ajar. And you're like, oh, I just wanna take a little peek inside and see what's going on. Or you see a pump room or an electrical room and the door is slightly ajar hmm i wonder what's in there so this morning as it's my last day in thailand i've decided to risk it all for a biscuit and try and have a look in some of these electrical rooms because there's a big one there there's an mdb room there there's a generator room there and it's all just too much i can't resist it any longer so i'm gonna grab a coffee and then we're gonna go and have a look. Right, well I got distracted. I dropped off the coffee and then I ended up watching Cybertruck videos for like 20 minutes. Man, that thing is an absolute beast. But let me give you a bit of a background as we go exploring. So we are staying on the 12th floor of a 16 story condo building. As with the previous video that I did in Thailand, each of these buildings has really interesting electrics, like big stuff, you know. Every floor has maybe 20, 30 apartments, 16 floors, big swimming pool on the top, gym, etc. There's a lot of need for electricity. I'm fascinated because it's totally something totally different to what we generally deal with in the UK. So I get my head torch out and I go exploring. So, of course, I happen to have picked the perfect time when the security guard is prowling the area. So, to be a little bit careful, but this is the first thing that I noticed. And the cover for this was open. Um, and so, I'm going to have a little peek inside and just see what's going on. So, it's basically got loads of relays and stuff in it and some nice big MCCBs and I'm, oh there's a, a gecko inside as well now honestly I'm not quite sure what that panel does I've got a feeling that is something to do with ventilation there is lighting but I don't know if there's lighting controls as such it seems like half of the lights are actually working and half of them aren't but over here is the pump room and it's got no handle on the door it's broken have a little look inside. All right, so this is the pump room and this is actually where the fire hydrants pump the water in case of a fire. So you can see these huge pumps with these massive pipes. Uh, and basically the idea is that in the event of a fire, you've got these controls as a diesel engine that basically pumps the water at high pressure throughout presumably some kind of sprinkler system in order to put the fire out. And there is this huge control panel here, which does all sorts of stuff. Now, I'll be the first to admit that I am not uh, an expert in building controls. I've dabbled over the years in various things, um, but I'm kind of just exploring this because it interests me more than anything. I mean, this is really interesting because I'm guessing they've got some maintenance guys who get bored from time to time and like to just sit down and uh, have a little chill out in here on their sun lounges. Now here, it's quite fascinating. You can see one of the maintenance guys has been drying his socks on the pipe. A useful, a useful secondary purpose for all of this equipment. They're fed from these kind of copexes which go up to the ceiling and then everything's wired in metal conduit along the ceilings. And it all goes back to these main control panels here, but mainly, this one over here. Everything's glided back into this controller, so presumably that's the thing that does the activation on all of these pumps. I can't see any isolators, which is interesting, because usually in the UK, if we've got any kind of device, you've got a local isolator switch for it. But I can't see that, like there's no separate isolation switches for each individual pump. They're just all wired, presumably in singles, straight off these conduits on the roof. So. Let me know in the comments if that's common where you are. Um, for me, it seems a little bit strange, but maybe it's just because I'm not that familiar with these kind of systems. Hi guys, 
Sorry to interrupt, I'm here in Hoi An in Vietnam and I've just shot an epic fault find video that I think you guys are going to love. Some of the electrics out here are absolutely mad and I've been working with an electrician out here for a day so make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already because you are going to love that video. But on another note, something that's helping me with my remote working is Tradeify and they are today's video sponsor. You've heard me banging on about them for ages because it's actually really good. It's software that helps tradespeople to get organized. I'm not gonna say much more about it. If you wanna try it out, there's a link below. You can get 14 days free trial, no credit card details needed. And then if you wanna sign up, sign up and you get 50% off using our special code. Back to the video. So I just bumped into an electrician who's very kindly letting me have a look in the generator room. So we can see here there's this huge panel for the generator and it looks like we've got the mains and then it's got an automatic changeover switch and then there's the generator switch basically. So that's really cool and here is the generator. So you've got a huge backup generator. Uh, presumably this is not running the whole building because I'm guessing it's not going to be powerful enough to do that but it might be powerful enough to run all of the safety systems in the building, which is really interesting. It's all soundproofed in here, which is really interesting as well. So when it does activate, the noise is not gonna go everywhere. It's really nice that the guy let me in. It, he just happened to be doing some checks and it was like, oh yeah, have a little look. So, sorry cap. Okay, well that's really interesting. So um, really nice uh, guy who's one of the maintenance managers just came over and uh, told me a little bit more about the system. So in the generator room there, that big generator that I just showed you is actually running all of the safety systems. So it runs the emergency lift uh, in case of a fire, it runs the emergency lighting and basically all of the essential safety systems for the whole building. There's actually two buildings, there's an A building here and a B building over there. Um, and then in here you've got the electrical room where basically, uh, well I can have a little, little look and show you. massive transformer so I'm gonna probably stay out of here because that looks a bit a uh, bit crazy but basically there's a I think it's probably like a 22 kV transformer or something um, I mean they should have those locked really um, but that is so I'm guessing like the mains high voltage comes in there uh, <laughs> I can't believe that just like massive exposed terminals and anyone can walk in um, and then in here, MDB room, I'm guessing then this is where the low voltage comes out because you've got these power ducts. So this is like a low voltage bus bar system, a bit like what I showed you guys in the last video. Uh, and that will then distribute high amperes up the risers to each floor so that they've got power in each floor basically. Um, and it's just, it's, it's, it's a basically a massive copper bus bar system that goes all the way up through the buildings and then they just tap off on each floor and on each floor then they've got a local distribution network which goes out to each apartment. Well that was nuts. Like I walked into an electrical room thinking it was just gonna be normal electrics. But as soon as I was confronted with that transformer, I could actually feel. Uh, you guys will know it if you've been in that situation. When you're near something that's giving off a huge magnetic field, you've got 20,000 volts kind of spiking around you. You can feel it. I went into flight mode and I just got out of there because I could just feel that I shouldn't, I shouldn't be in there. Um, so, <laughs> that was interesting, I did not expect that. So I'm back in the safety of the lift. Schindler's lift, in fact. Really emotional film if you ever want to watch that. This place is nuts. Like, where, where, where do you go where you can randomly walk around and look in any of the electrical rooms and then when you get caught doing so, the, ma the maintenance manager just tells you all about it and is like, yeah, have a look. Um, you know, have a look at the generator room and have a look around. It's just, 
just nuts. And then there's an electrical room with a 22 kV transformer in with no labeling or anything on it that anyone could walk into by just opening the handle. It's not locked. I mean, welcome to Thailand. So here in our apartment, this is where the electrics end up. From those little energy meters that I showed you in the electrical cupboard, we have a distribution board in each apartment with a main switch and various circuits. Uh, and it's just a bog standard little apartment. But when I was exploring that distribution board, I took the cover off and there was a little label inside and it said subscribe. And what I realized when I looked into the YouTube stats recently is that 73% of you haven't subscribed. That doesn't make any sense. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let's have a look in there. So here we have the main breaker, which is a C50. So 50 amp rated type C. It's a double pole MCB basically controlling the whole thing. And then we have a C16 for the lighting. We've got a C16 for the air conditioning in the living room, another C16 for the air conditioning in the bedroom. Then we've got an earth leakage circuit breaker, otherwise known as an RCD in the UK. And this is a type AC one, which would not be acceptable now in the UK. Uh, it's a 40 amp, 30 milliamp RCD. Then we've got a 16 amps type C for the receptacle, which is Americanism for socket for the washing machine. And another one for the receptacle for the microwave and the refrigerator. Another one for the hot plate or hob, basically, as we would call it, which is an induction hob here. And then a C32 for the water heater, otherwise known as a geezer. In, uh, in American terms. And this whole board is rated at 100 amps, uh, 240 volts. It's got a little bit of trunking running down from the top and it's made of plastic and its brand is ABB. I love it and I hate it here. Like they're so relaxed that they're horizontal, you might say in this country. Relaxed on, in a good way, but also relaxed in ways that should not be so relaxed, like with electrical safety. It's really fascinating to see how they do things on the other side of the world. And it makes me appreciate the electrical standards that we've got in the UK, because they are for our protection after all. I would never be able to do in the UK what I've just done here. The doors would be locked. There would be signs on the door saying danger, high voltage. There's just no way that that would happen in the UK because of the way that the safety standards are. I mean, look, here's another example. Electrical room, door is ajar. So let's have a look. Ah, oh, here we go, right. So welcome to a more safe electrical room. So here we've got the bus bar that I was telling you about. So it's exactly as I expected. It's a uh, bus bar, floor to ceiling going up through the riser cupboards. This is what we call a riser. It's basically like a, a channel that goes from the ground floor all the way up to the top floor um, and it contains all of the systems. This riser contained this bus bar, then they've tapped off of it with a very similar um, switch to the one that we saw in the other building. Then it taps off into this, then each individual apartment has its own circuit via what's called an MCCB, a molded case circuit breaker. And then from those molded case circuit breakers, we go through to these meters. So everything is submetered for each apartment. We've got a nice messy entanglement of fiber up there as well. Um, so yeah, they've got really high speed internet here, which is, is good at least. And then over on this side, I'm guessing it's more safety systems. I've got some UPSs up there, fire alarm there. I don't know what's in here, let's take a little look. Um, okay, so here we've got some kind of low voltage circuitry, AC adapter, 12 volt battery. So this is all kind of um, low voltage stuff for safety systems. That is the emergency lighting system. So you've got these maintenance-free emergency lights. Uh, looks like the controllers for those and maybe batteries. So it's some kind of central emergency lighting system. <laughs> it's fun. It is really fun in places like this, you know? Um, what can I say? Let me know in the comments, guys. Do you live and work in a place like this? How do you cope? I would love to know. How do you cope with the craziness? It's just another world here in Thailand. But I hope you've enjoyed me sharing what I found, my explorations, and putting my life on the line. 
for our artisan viewers. Really appreciate you following my journey. Click here if you want to watch a video of me exploring a, an apartment block in Thailand. Click here if you want to see the most dodgy electrics I've ever seen on a tiny island in Indonesia.